Oh, greetings everyone. It's your girl Amethyst Tuesday. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you think you'd enjoy my content, I really think you would. Please subscribe for more entertaining and enchanting things to watch, okay? Ooh, I knocked down my camera. Okay, so in this video, I'll be telling you all there is to know about the legendary feminist nun named Juana Ramirez de Asbaje. Okay, so yeah, she did a lot of good in her lifetime and made a pretty deep mark in history for women. Whether she's a witch or a nun or anything else, yes, she did follow a certain religion that may not agree with magic and witchcraft, but witches can still summon the spirit of Juana Ramirez to aid them in whatever issue they have, okay? So she assists with many things, but before getting into how to work with her during spellcasting, I first want to tell you about her story, okay? So she was born in Spain sometime in the mid-1600s, and she died in April the 17th, um, 1965, in Mexico, okay? She was a poet, she was an artist, um, she was a dramatist, a scholar, and a nun and also an outstanding writer of the Latin American colonial period. Okay, and I know this is my, um, sorry, I thought I heard something over here. I know this is my, um, like, this is a witchy channel, but I, you know, I like to get into the history of some of the spirits that, you know, I work with. And it's good to know their history because it helps you understand them a little better. Okay? So, you already know by all of that, that she was an extremely amazing and creative and intelligent woman, you know? So, her mother was single, and she raised her and her two older sisters all by herself. Her mother being a part of a respectable family with high status, she kept her daughters, like, poised and educated. They, were, they weren't like these simple chicks in the, in the village or whatever. So... Yeah, she kept them, you know, pretty, pretty up there, pretty, you get what I mean. But mainly it was the elder sister who received like the education and all of that, all right? At a young age, Juana witnessed the world of male supremacy, you know, very, very young. And saw how unfairly women were treated when it came to certain things how they were unfairly denied basic human rights like education, you know, and unnecessary struggles that her sisters went through attending classes where she was, you know, literally the only woman in school, you know, or the only woman in the room receiving an education, you know. Juana took interest in receiving an education very, very young, you know. I'm talking about young, young, like six, seven years old type young. Basically, like, she had to be, like, eight. All right, so, and she begged her mother to put her through school. Sorry if I'm moving so much, but it's, like, late and I smoke, so, all right. And she begged her mother to put her through school. Her mother denied this because, you know, her being a mom, she was probably worried about things like, you know, just men attacking her or just things like that. No mother wants to put their daughter in, a situ in like, a, a situation that they know that they'll struggle in, or you get what I mean. I don't know why, but I doubt her mother, um, a lot of people think that her mother was just saying no to just be like, oh, no, you can't go, as bad as she wanted to go, and was just letting her older sister go. But she was the youngest, and I doubt it was because she was being a bitch or anything like that. I just think that maybe she just didn't want her youngest and last daughter to suffer the type of things that her first daughter went through, okay? So, because judging by how well she kept her daughters and believed that women are naturally intelligent, I know she wanted all of her daughters to be great and have a good position in life. She taught them how to be women and how they should be able to use their intelligence and allowed to expand their intelligence through learning, just like men did and could do, you know? So, and that's how things were. Little Juana even tried to convince her mother that she could dress up disguised as a boy so no one would know she would you know so no one would know that she was a boy and then she would be able to attend but of course her mom forbade it 
By the time she was 13, she was already teaching other kids Latin, okay? And she didn't have much access to formal education, but, you know, she was very, very smart. She pretty much taught herself. She was self-taught, and only the smartest people teach themselves, in my opinion, all right? So later on in life, she was sent away to live with some relatives in Mexico. That's where an important man discovered her gift of intelligence, or, well, gift of intelligence. Women are naturally intelligent. All of us are smart. Even the stupid ones are a little smart, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, I saw her gift of intelligence and invited her to court to be a lady in waiting, okay? So when she went to court, it was a room full of men who were supposed to ask her questions. There were about 40 noted scholars, and they asked her a series of apparently, well, supposedly difficult questions to test her mental abilities. So um, she didn't end up taking the job. After being in that room full of misogynists, she decided that she never wanted to get married, okay? She didn't want the job anyways because it, was re it would restrict her from, you know, certain things like being able to study and things like that. She did pass, like she answered all of the questions with flying colors, but she didn't even want the job. She didn't even want it anymore after, you know, going through that. So, um, yeah, that was just another way they had of stopping women from advancing, making them a lady in waiting, basically. But, you know, yeah. And so that's when she went away to become a nun. And she remained cloistered in the covenant of Santa Paula for the rest of her life. Her story is most definitely one of my favorites. Because aside from how unfair things were for her, she pushed through and she did the seemingly impossible, making it more than possible in times like this. And it's because of historical figures like her that we're able to have and do the things that we have and do now. And I can proudly say that I've been to schools. And not only that, but I've been to schools in a different country. So Juana Ramirez de Azbaje can be very powerful ally in spell work, okay, and in spell castings, especially for all y'all Christian witches out there. So the spirit is not meant for love spells or sex magic unless you're trying to make someone faithful, a breakup spell, disappearance spell, or protection from negative sexual energies, demons included. She's like the Kalima of Mexico, sort of. All of her poems contain accusations of male criticism, and her love poems just have strife, pain, jealousy, loneliness. Um, she was famous for her intellect and was often attacked by men in many occasions, but she always stood up for women's right to knowledge, and I'm totally for that. Like, Juana Ramirez can be used for justice spells, protection spells, and certain different custom spells. As for offerings, you can give her a poem, a sad story, your testimony, depending on what sort of spell you plan to perform. Okay, so remember that when summoning her, you need to be saying her full name, Juana Ramirez de Azbaje, okay? Because there is another historical um, Juana Ramirez who is actually a Venezuelan soldier, okay? And uh, I'll talk about her in another video. Though the spirit can be used in both light and dark workings, um, I'd say that, you know, it's better to use her for light workings because if you use her for darker workings, it can get very dark. So, yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're an experienced practitioner, I hope to spark some interest in calling on this spirit for assistance in your casting because I do recommend it. If you're a troubled soul seeking for help and guidance and, you know, would like a consultation, a reading, or spell work, do not hesitate to contact me, okay? All of my contact information will be in the description below. Before you go, don't forget to cast a little spell on that like button, seduce that subscribe button, and turn on that post notification bell to know when's the next time I upload, okay? So, this is Amethyst Tuesday wishing you well from afar. Bye-bye.